English Lowlands Beach Forests The English Lowlands Beach Forests are a terrestrial accordion in the United Kingdom, as defined by the World Wide Fund for Nature WWF and the European Environment Agency EA. It covers 45,600 km to 17,600 SQMI of southern England, approximately as far as the border with Devon and South Wales in the west, into the Severn Valley in the northwest, into the East Midlands in the north, and up to the border of Norfolk in the northeast of its range. The WWF code for this accordion is PIA 421. Accordional Context To the northwest and southwest lies the similar Celtic broadleaf forests accordion, which covers most of the rest of the British Isles. In addition, two further accordions are located in the southwestern and northwestern edges of Ireland and the northwestern fringes of Scotland North Atlantic moist mixed forests and beyond the Scottish Highland boundary fault Caledonian conifer forests. The whole of this Atlantic archipelago is thus considered as originally or in some sense ideally forested, with only the far mountainous north being primarily coniferous. Across the English Channel lies the Atlantic mixed forests accordion in northern France and the Low Countries. The difference between the English lowlands beech forests and the Celtic broadleaf forests lies in the fact that southeastern England is comparatively drier and warmer in climate and lower lying in terms of topography. Geologically, something of the distinction can be found in the dominance of the southern England chalk formation in this accordion and the T-zigzag line, which divides the island of Great Britain into a sedimentary southeast and a metamorphic and igneous northwest. However, the WWF division was preceded by that of the Hungarian biologist Miklos Udvardi, who had considered the greater part of the British Isles as just one biogeographic province in the Palearctic realm, which he termed British Islands. Characteristics Historically, much of this lowland and submontane region was covered with high canopy forests dominated by European beech Fagus sylvatica, but also including other species of tree, including oak, ash, rowan, and yew, and yew. In summer, the forests are generally cool and dark, because the beech produces a dense canopy, and thus restricts the growth of other species of tree and wild flowers. In the spring, however, Thick carpets of bluebells can be found flourishing before the beech leaves out and shades the forest floor. The National Vegetation Classification NVC plant communities associated with beech forests together with their occurrence ratios in England as a whole are W12 Fagus Sylvatica Mercurialis Perennis Dogs Mercury Woodland Base Rich Soils C. 40% W14 Fagus Sylvatica Rubus Fruticosus Bramble Woodland Mesotrophic Soils C. 45% W15 Fagus Sylvatica Dyschampsia Flexuosa Wavy Hair Grass Woodland Acidic Soils C. 15% River Systems, the most significant of which is the Thames, were historically host to lower canopy riverine forests dominated by black alder, and this can still be encountered occasionally today. Also included in this accordion are the distinctive ecosystems associated with the rivers themselves, as well as their flood meadows and estuaries. The soils are largely based on limestone, and the climate is temperate, with steady amounts of rainfall. Temperatures can fall below freezing in the winter. Nowadays, much of this accordion has been given over to agriculture with the growing of wheat, barley, and rapeseed particularly common, as well as to the raising of livestock especially cattle and sheep. In places it is very heavily populated with towns, suburbs and villages found nearly everywhere, although the plateau of Salisbury Plain remains largely wild. The most significant center of population is London, at the head of the Thames Estuary, one of the largest cities in the world. Due to this high population density, and to a certain amount of depredation caused by the non-native gray squirrel, Edible dormice in the Chilterns and deer. This forest accordion is considered at high risk with a critical slash endangered conservation status accorded it by the WWF. Air pollution may also be leading to a reduction in beach numbers through increased susceptibility to disease. 
Among fauna found in this accordion, the West European hedgehog, red fox, Eurasian badger, European rabbit, and wood mouse are relatively common, while the following are classed as near threatened on the Epcon Red List. European otter, red squirrel, harvest mouse, hazel dormouse, greater horseshoe, that corn crate the barbastel, as a vulnerable species on the red list, is in greater danger still. Rare plants include the red helleborine, bird's nest orchid, and knothole yoke moss. Rare fungi include the devil's bolete and hedgehog mushroom. History At the end of the last glaciation, about 10,000 years ago, the area's ecosystem was characterized by a largely treeless tundra. Pollen studies have shown that this was replaced by a tago of birch, and then pine, before their replacement in turn C. 4,500 B.C. by most of the species of tree encountered today, including, by 4,000 B.C., the beech, which seems to have been introduced from mainland Europe. This was used as a source of flour, ground from the triangular nutlets contained in the mast, or fruit of the beech, after its tannins had been leached out by soaking. Beech mast has also traditionally been fed to pigs. However, by 4,000 B.C., as Oliver Rackham has indicated, the dominant tree species was not the beech, but the small-leaved lime, also known as the pry tree. The wildwood was made up of a patchwork of limewood areas and hazelwood areas interspersed with oak and elm and other species. The pry seems to have become less abundant now, because the climate has turned against it, making it difficult for it to grow from seed. Nevertheless, some remnants of ancient lime would still remain in South Suffolk. Clearance of forests began with the introduction of farming C 4500 BC, particularly in the higher-lying parts of the country, like the South Downs. At this time, the whole region, apart from upland areas under plough, and marshy areas e.g. Romney Marsh in Kent and much of Somerset, was heavily forested, with woodland stretching nearly everywhere. Notable surviving examples include the Forest of Arden, Warwickshire, the Chilterns on the heights running from Oxfordshire through Buckinghamshire and Hertfordshire to Bedfordshire, Epping Forest on the border of northeast Greater London and Essex, Kinver Edge, a remnant of the Mersham Forest on the border of South Staffordshire and Worcestershire, Moor Forest, South Shropshire, Savernake Forest, Wiltshire, Selwood Forest, Somerset. The Weald Kent, East Sussex, West Sussex, and Surrey, 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 which would Oxfordshire. Wire Forest on the border of Worcestershire and Shropshire, all of these were once far more extensive than they are today. For example, according to a late 9th century writer, the weald from the Anglo-Saxon word weald equals forest once stretched from Kent to Hampshire, and was 120 miles 190 km long by 30 broad. The new forest in southwest Hampshire remains the largest intact forested area in this accordion at 571 km2, although the hedgerow system, which separates fields from lanes and also from other fields, is also extensive and serves as an important habitat for otherwise displaced woodland fauna. Some species' rich hedgerows date back at least 700 years, if not 1,000. For many species of bird, significant estuarine habitats include the Thames and Severn estuaries and the Mid-Essex coast. The Mesozoic history of the area can be seen in the Jurassic Coast World Heritage Site, where about 180 mile fossil-rich sedimentary deposits have been exposed along a 95-mile 153 km stretch of the Dorset and East Devon coast. The science of paleontology can be said to have started in large measure here, with the pioneering work of Mary Anning. The Great Storm of 1987 was responsible for the uprooting of some 15 million trees in this area.